The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, an advice show for the modern era, and welcome to this very cash exploratory meeting of the Papal Council. Let's not make a big deal out of it, you know? We Let's are, hey, everybody. It's a, new, it's a new era, you know what I mean? It's a Sunday brunch meeting, just put that Put that magic firewood away that makes this, the mm-hmm. signal smoke come out. Yep. Um, it's actually the same dust they used in Are You Afraid of the Dark? Exactly. <laughs> Put away your midnight society invo- dust. Pick up that mimosa, and let's just let's just freewheel and chat about it. I'm Justin McElroy. I'm the oldest brother and sort of the senior member of this uh, advisory council. Is that mm-hmm. fair? Is that? And I'm Travis McElroy, your middlest brother, and I just ordered us a round of Virgin Bloody Marys. Oh, that sounds great. I'm the baby brother, Griffin McElroy, and let's let's get rolling with this papal smear. Yeah. Uh- <laughs> I'm just going to start. I feel like we should just throw some names out there, spitball it, okay. and sort of see where we're where we're at. Okay, let me just kick it off super cash me. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. <laughs> let me just get that name out there. Feel like it's kind of top of mind right now and mm. we're all sort of dancing around it. I figure let me just throw those bones right out. I there. Appreci- yeah, I appreciate just cut through the <laughs> through the chaff, through the hubbub. Um I, I think, think we can all agree though, Justin, because of the massive amounts of skeletons in your closet, you are probably not a good choice. Yes, literally and figuratively. <laughs> Sorry, boys. I don't understand. What I'm saying is, if you look at my closet, they're all reading Madden magazines and have like licorice wrappers surrounding them. Okay, okay. it's a weird closet. So, um, man, I'm man, I'm bummed out already. Um, Justin, I don't think that you, I don't know that you have what it takes. Just an advisement. I feel like we're whiteboarding right now, and I feel like that name is kind of on the whiteboard. Okay. You like you try to wipe it off and it's like permanent who did this permanent mark sure. on my whiteboard? I'll put I'll put it on there like when a teacher gets like a really shitty answer from a student <laughs> in the class who doesn't want to embarrass him. And he's like, "Oh, yeah, sure, triangles." <laughs> <laughs> okay, does anybody else have any favorite actors I'm, from the I'm, 1930s? I'm going to I'm going to vote Morgan Freeman. Okay, I like that. I feel like he's in a lot of stuff. People mm-hmm. trust him. He's got that powerful voice. Okay, Travis also bases all of his um, religious philosophies around the movie Bruce Almighty. And it's okay, follow-up I'm glad sequel. you said that, because my second choice is okay. Jim Carrey. Yeah. Oh. All right. He's not working so much lately. He probably has some free time. And I think he would make a hilarious rubber-faced pope. Okay. Uh do we have is there a chance of a black pope this year i feel like black pope black president the um I, what about checks and balances <laughs> has anybody stopped to think about checks and balances i why would they need why would there need to be a check or balance against the race the racial composition <laughs> i'm just saying checks and balances because Dude, the only ask- thing stopping the pope is the president <laughs> everyone knows does. that if we have black pope and black president, I mm-hmm. love that I'm in that era. I'm loving that I'm in that period of history. Yeah. Do have to wonder who's looking out for the white guy? You know? <laughs> yeah, because that's what I'm always worried about is that pretty soon the white man is just going to fall by the wayside. Yeah, what about the white man? Who's what? looking out for my wants, my needs? Who's, <laughs> we gotta... who's representing my beliefs? We'll have to establish a, a new Southern Baptist pope. A new a new papacy, papacy cabinet altogether, but for the Southern Baptist Church. And I think the leader of that would be Guy Fieri. Can we put any more irony in our voices so that people know that this is not a real thing that we feel? 
No, I don't really care who the Pope is. Yeah, I mean, it was either. exciting when the Pope died last time, though. I'm, I'm kind of sad that that we're not gonna get. Remember, I was on Pope Watch because I yeah. remember I was waiting for the Pope to die, and I was waiting on um <laughs> Terry Schiavo. To die. Oh no! So I was like, "Who's gonna win?" And then they went at the same win? time, like at the end of Notebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Much like book. Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, they went within moments of each other cursing the other one's name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, which Basically. put her right out of the running. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is our papal, uh, sort of a papal advocacy show, My Brother, My Brother, and Me. Let's get to some other questions, and maybe we can like just circle around back to this question when you guys have any other good suggestions. I kind of feel like everybody keeps coming back around to me, but we'll have to see if that sticks by the end of the up. Uh, I'm a teacher in training, and in less than a year, I'll be student teaching in a junior high or high school. Though I'm more than a quarter century old, I've already been told by various students, friends, and bartenders that I look 15. Now my dentist is telling me that I have to get braces, which will only make things worse. I need some tips on looking older so my colleagues won't be asking me for a hall pass when I'm on the way to the teacher's lounge. And my students won't be inviting me to come play Skyrim with them after school. Can you advise? That's from belatedly brace-faced. Start smoking. No. It makes you look cool and old. That could stud his growth, though. Yeah, and nobody looks good when they're smoking and they have braces. It can't stop. What if he's smoking a pipe? Can, (laughs) can Can I ask you if, like, so right now, just so I'm clear... It sounds pretty good, though. Yeah, it's like, there's nothing bad about this situation you've just outlined. Because yeah. you could be the only human being in the universe to ever live out that thing that happens in movies where, like, they see the... the it's the, it's the catch-me-if-you-can situation where, like, mm-hmm. the kids pick on the person they think is a kid and then they walk to the front of the class and like, what's up? I'm your teacher, Dr. Youngface. And then <laughs> they, they feel so stymied. They feel so embarrassed. And, and maybe he gives them a hard time. You're also got to consider undercover work. Mm-hmm. That's really yeah. important. See, you went catch me if you can. I went uh, never been kissed. Mm-hmm. Or I've like never Jump seen. Street. I've mm-hmm. never seen never been kissed, but I assume it's some deep undercover shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, now on the on the negative side, you will not be able to eat Tostitos. <laughs> <laughs> no. Tostitos out of the question. <laughs> Taffy out of the question. I'm surprised that this is the first braces related question that we've gotten because. I, I feel like I could really bust out some. I lost so many brackets. I ate one once because I got enthusiastic <laughs> about some taffy. I broke a tooth last weekend. I was eating a, uh, a protein bar. I believe mm-hmm. it was from Kashi. I was eating it, and I ha- I literally had this thought. <laughs> what is in this? It tastes like teeth. Yeah. And oh, then no. it turned out that it was, in fact, I was eating my teeth. <laughs> my Oof. tooth. So instead of braces, you should get yourself dentures. Why do you have to get braces? Nobody has to get braces. I had to. It was literally life. My teeth were growing into my fucking brain. Like, it was (laughs) life-threatening in my case. I did have to get braces. My girl does not come correct, and I don't really care. It's just, I'm not, I'm living with it. Yeah, you know? your but your grill didn't look like uh, doesn't look like a fucking sarlacc pit, which is basically what I was working with mm-hmm. in middle school. I'm saying some people need it, and I'm saying it's gonna be it's gonna be rough for you vis a vis skittles. But I am saying that uh, I think that this I think this 21 Jump Street opportunity, if you let it slide by, you're gonna regret it for the rest of your life. Plus, and, like, and I'll also say this because I have lots of friends that look much younger than they are, and like right now that sucks. But when you're like sixty and you look like you're like forty two, so good. it's gonna be a blessing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because then you'll be able to hook up with all the forty two year olds you want. Right? <laughs> Any other advantages to being one of the students? You could blow off class sometimes, by mm-hmm. which I mean, don't teach it. Just sit in a chair and wait for the real teacher <laughs> to show up, and then like halfway through, oh my god, okay, okay. So first day of class, you go in, you grab a chair. You don't address, and then you're like, after a couple minutes, like, where is this teacher going, man? It's like he, um, it, it's like he had this whole class planned, and we had 50 minutes, and we've already waited eight minutes. So even if he showed up now, and one of the other students would be like, yeah, 42 minutes left, and he would like, and then you stand up and be like, that's your first lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to high school subtraction. Welcome to high school subtraction. <laughs> high school subtraction 101. 
With me, Professor Youngface. You are all clearly remedial. <laughs> Welcome to remedial subtraction. <laughs> Listen, I got addition. Damn, no problem. Subtraction, though, it's like, where are they going? And that's when you have like a have like a oh, captain by captain moment and say like, just add negative numbers, and they're like, oh, I understand subtraction, and then they can become cashiers. Oh man, do you think that new teachers, whenever like a new teacher starts like their first day at a school? They try to like break the world record for desk standing students. Like, I bet I can do this shit. I bet I can do this shit by third period. These kids are gonna be mm-hmm. on their desk swearing blood oaths to me. <laughs> they probably keep a pretty close eye on that sort of thing in yeah. the administration now. Like, do you think that looks... after that movie came out though, that they had to start like purchasing desks based on their standability? Oh, because you don't want to have like shoddy like unbalanced desks, mm-hmm. and it's like oh, listen, okay. Ever since oh, Dead fuck, Captain Mike, my... <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Shit. And then he's just holding on to the ceiling fan spinning around. If that scene ended with one of the kids standing on his desk and the desk just falling to splinters, it would be the best scene ever. Oh, Captain! <laughs> ah! I always thought <laughs> cuss to the janitor going, "I was going to tighten the seats tomorrow." Damn it! I always thought that movie. It's a great movie, but it desperately needed more nut shots. <laughs> It's got Robin Williams oh, in it. I expect a certain level of nut shots from a Robin Williams as, film. As one of the students like started to fall, he grabbed the guy next to him and grabbed the guy next to him. Pretty soon, it just like dominoed around the room until they were all in one big nut shot pile. Yeah. As Robin Williams just smacked his forehead and said, "Let's get back to subtraction." Patch Patch Adams <laughs> fucking ruined me for several reasons, <laughs> but it ruined my Robin. And so Williams. did the movie. It ruined my Robin Williams expectation games because then you watch that. Uh, you watch that uh, "What Dreams May Come," and it's like I don't understand why these people aren't being, you know, hitting the balls with a giant clown shoe. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that this person needs to also understand that they have the possibility of being the student teacher that somebody has a crush on in high school. That, and I'm not saying that's something that you need to pursue, but that's a very formative experience for them. Some would say the most formative experience, and mm-hmm. I think that you could be that for somebody. To serve with love. Mm-hmm. Griffin, do you have a, a question for us? Sure. I Yahoo have a, Answer Service. I have one uh, pruned from the Yahoo Answer Service uh, by Nick Robinson, uh, cur- curator, cu- curer of this. Uh, thank you, Nick. It's by Yahoo Answers user Rob, who asks, how do I find out if Subway is paying my girlfriend to advertise their products to me? Hmm? I think Subway Sorry? might secretly be paying my girlfriend to advertise their products to me to try to get me to become a customer. I need to find out <laughs> if this is happening or how to stop it. Oh my this God. is that new wave advertising I've been hearing about. This is like, what's the level below Gorilla? That's what this is. Um, this is rough. This is rough stuff. It's, it's rough on a few levels. One, because this person obviously has some sort of sure. ish. What? But you also, with that, though. well, okay, you can't assume that, Griffin. I can pretty say, I mean, the evidence, I'm, uh, I guess it's all circumstantial, but. They pay Jared to advertise. Why wouldn't they pay his girlfriend? Are Fuck, you that's dating great... Jared? They pay Michael Phelps to wave his giant arms and advertise it. Yeah. Why wouldn't they pay his girlfriend, Michael Phelps? <laughs> <laughs> um, what, but, what, what is this woman doing that has turned Rob's suspicion to high alert? Is what I want to know. What are the, what are those convos like? Because if it's just like they're driving down the street, she's like, "What should we get for lunch?" I vote for Subway, and she does that every day. <laughs> Maybe she just really really likes Subway and their their large selection of cheap, large and delicious sandwiches. Oh, or maybe maybe it's like when he gets into a fight with his parents, and he's just like, "I never get my own way." And she says, "Do you know where you can have everything your own way at mm-hmm. Subway? So, mm-hmm. They'll make Fi- sandwiches just for you, John." Five five dollar footlongs. Hashtag February. <laughs> Did you just fucking say hashtag? <laughs> he said Are you hashtag a sandwich on. robot? I certainly am not. But let me tell you more about the delicious toppings. Hey, just start robots asking could, her. Robots couldn't make sandwiches like the subway artists at Subway make sandwiches. It takes an artist's touch and finesse to put together a sandwich like this. And five dollars for twelve inches can't beat that. Hashtag Jared value. <laughs> Listen, uh, honey, I understand that Subway's great. Could you wait till we're done having sex to tell me about their sandwiches, please? I love the way you're having sex with me. <laughs> it reminds me of the f- speaking of footlongs. 
I love the way you're having sex. If you want to feel satisfied, check out the latest deals in Subway. Five dollars for a foot long. You won't leave empty either. Speaking of double meat, let's. <laughs> Sorry about your it. sister. Hey, what's your favorite bread type? Mine's Parmesan <laughs> rosemary Italian. <laughs> this no, is the we... worst eulogy I've ever heard. I <laughs> uh, I maybe just start asking how she likes certain sandwich components, like. Or like, just keep taking her to Quiznos. Do you, <laughs> see, if, see if smoke pours out of her ears. Do you like? How do you? Like, do you like bacon? Yeah, but I don't like it crispy. I like it kind of floppy and stacked. stacked I read a, on a, bunch I read a of other report bacon. in Le Mans that said that bacon is way better when it's floppy and gross <laughs> and it's been touched by several people before you eat it. Uh, do you well, like he, your meat to be like? pre-portioned into those little cardboard bowls. Mm -hmm. when you yes, make her, please. When you make her chicken for dinner, does she turn her nose about and say, when did you cook this? Just now? What am I supposed Ooh. to do with this? Check me back in my four hours. you put this two wax paper sheets and then kind of smack it onto the bread like it's been misbehaving? <laughs> Thank you. This is great pizza, but could you put another slice of pizza on top of it and then just dunk it in water to make it really wet? <laughs> Thank you. Is that how the, I've not had Subway's pizza. Is that what it's like? Uh, <laughs> I would like some oil and vinegar on my salad, but could you look at me disdainfully when I ask for it, please? Thank you. Maybe, but maybe it's deep. Maybe it goes deeper. Maybe she's getting paychecks. Maybe she has a, a source of income that he does not understand. Maybe it's it's an inscrutable Subway advertising paycheck. Maybe she's on the street team. Maybe she disappears. Now, street for, team, I'd believe. Yeah. Street you team, know, I'd buy. I also want to say, listen, believe me, in this world, you would be amazed at the different job opportunities that exist. Do you know that when you listen to the radio and people call in to like answer their crazy questions about the fight they had with their boyfriend or the time that they caught their sister doing something, those are all like paid people to do that. That's not real. That's not true, Shaf. It is true. My friend Kelly was paid to be one of those people. That's a real thing. Not every time, but sometimes just to kind of get the ball rolling and to get people to start answering. You only have to, you know, uh, make one friend on Twitter that turns out to be a robot designed to sell you Subway sandwiches mm -hmm. to then have to then, you know, have that veil of suspicion built between you and your every yes. loved one. Yes. So what I'm saying is maybe, maybe, maybe there is a company, not necessarily Subway specific, but kind of they cover a bunch of different organizations, a bunch of different businesses, yeah. and they hire actors and actresses to pose as people's loved ones. Yeah. To try to convince them to use the products from that location. It's not crazy. It could happen. Wouldn't I'm just it, saying that that's not crazy. I want to be there when this campaign, when the subway campaign ends. Because marketing dollars are finite. You'll uh, have to get them one day when you say, so where do you want to go? Uh, subway. What? No. Actually, fuck Subway. I, I want to go to Texas Steakhouse. I mean, but what if she is on the longest con with this gentleman? This subway shuts down, and she's like, "Listen, Mark, I had a great time, but we've come to the end of <laughs> our end of divorce." Yeah, it's it, listen. You were great. You were a great uh, consumer. Lots of like a surprising amount of millions of dollars you were giving to Subway every <laughs> In year. In a weird, you've, you've also <laughs> lost a ton of weight just mm -hmm. eating Subway every day. In a weird sort of way, I almost sort of developed feelings for you, but not. A lot of feelings, and I we do want to We shared a lot of topping it. preferences. We liked the same kind of bread. Let's let's just, why don't we start over, you know? Why don't, why don't we go get it? Oh, no. Okay, no. Mm. Let's go to Penn Station. Let's go to well, Penn Station. Maybe that'll be our new thing. Come on, I'll get you a pib extra. My friend and I just finished our first adventure in home brewing. The beer turned out great, but here's a problem. We don't have any idea what to call it. We could really use some of that McElroy wisdom to pick out a great name for our brew. The beer is an Irish stout with notes of dark chocolate. If it helps, we could send you a few bottles to try it out. This is from Brewildered in Treetown. Travis, did you just put uh, this question in here so that we can maybe get some free beers? Did you think they would just send free beers to P.O. Box 54 Honey to West Virginia 25706? Perhaps. Uh, I also want to point out to Brew Wildered that it is easier for us to name the beer if you send the beer first. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder for you, for us to name it and then be held by you sending it to us afterwards. I, I just came said I just came up with a name for the the beer that Travis tried to make that one time when we lived together in Batavia, Ohio, um, which was bottled in plastic bottles, and then I had two sips of, and the name of that beer is Bubbly Soy Sauce because that's what it was. <laughs> 
That's it what it didn't turn out well. And I have no idea what I did wrong. Well, what you but did it did not turn out well. What we did wrong was that we used tap water and we did it in a d- crock pot that I had used to make ramen earlier that day, <laughs> and then we put it in uh, plastic bottles in our refrigerator for about four days. So uh-huh. what we did, there were a few steps there where we goofed and slipped, maybe a little, maybe uh-huh. a tad. Um, man, that was fucking grody. Man, that was the worst. <laughs> it was grody. It's the first beer I've ever had that I could not give away. I took it to like three different parties. Yeah. And, just like, and I bought this beer if anyone wants it. And they took a look at the unlabeled brown plastic <laughs> bottles with the white screw on caps that looked like I just dumped out some mug root beer and refilled it. And they're like, nah, we're good. That's, Couldn't that's give it away. Not crazy about that. I will dip my sushi in it though, because that seems uh-huh. like a, that seems just perfect. This um, this is a. <laughs> why do you need a name? You know, why do you need branding? It's just beer. No, you just Ooh, drink it. Well, you could make it to market to TV shows that don't want to worry about branding issues and just call it beer. <laughs> just call it beer. <laughs> I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So like a, on the real world. They cover up the they cover up the labels with duct tape. With this, right. you could just say a bottle of refreshing liquid. You could even be just, yes, yeah. Do you think the person who has to cover up the beer labels with duct tape on the real world describes themselves as being in the entertainment industry? <laughs> oh God, yes. <laughs> I'm he, like he's he he works marketing in mm-hmm. in the entertainment. He's the same guy that duct tapes over the emblems on people's hats yeah. on MTV Cribs. Hold on there. Okay, hold on there, Buckaroo. <laughs> Let me just get that shampoo. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Duct taped. Yeah, I'm I will in, be in my trailer full of tape. I, I am in reverse marketing. Is what I'm into. Um, mm-hmm. I, I I keep I stunt brands. Is what I do. So. Uh, two years ago, I was dating a girl that turned out to be paid by Subway, and <laughs> after having my heart broken, I sworn off all branding. It seems so. a, sta- a strange crusade. I know. I, know. I, I do have a long term plan to uh, murder Jared Fogle in three months. So. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I do have that going for me. That's sort of my whole, sort Building pretty much that. my whole motif right now. <laughs> do you think Jared? <laughs> do you think when she broke up with him, Jared was like waiting outside? In his, in his, <laughs> Come on, in babe. His subway jeep. In his subway no, it's not a seat. subway motorcycle. Obviously. Come on, babe. Obviously. <laughs> with his stupid Garden State sidecar. <laughs> He's in. wearing a helmet made of day old bread. <laughs> Great, now I'm hungry. Yeah, I know. So, names for beer. Names for beer. I think you need to do anything where you take, like, the word brew or suds or anything and, and place it into the title of something else that you enjoy. What about this? Slam drunk. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> How's that? That's, that's kind of sporty. Oh, uh, what, about, what about suds buds? Bud suds. And uh-huh. so suds buds is obviously the name of your company. And then Bud Suds, because it's beer, and maybe you sprinkle a little bit of weed in it. Uh A lot of people have been trying to find a way to corner this new, booming, legal marijuana market. I think sprinkle some flakes of your beer into the weed, and then that that can be (laughs) your whole thing. Yeah, it's it's, it's weird. What about rehydrated beer? And you tell people that it came in a powder form, and Mm -hmm. then you Uh rehydrated it. Because that seems convenient and kind of futuristic. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about pre pre popsicles? <laughs> Couldn't that be any fluid though? <laughs> Not beer. It doesn't freeze. <laughs> Got it. What about um? What about? <laughs> what about? How about? How about, what about suds suds buds dad fuel? <laughs> <laughs> dad right. fuel is a great name for a beer. <laughs> no, just dad fuel. Dad fuel. <laughs> It's when my dad, soul band aids. When my daddy comes home from work and he's, you know, running on fumes, running on anything. He's but he needs some dad fuel. He, puts, like, he gasses up with some dad fuel and then he's ready to hang out with us. <laughs> You'll be ready to dad for two to three hours after just one dad fuel. Pop it open, rip it off, bounce them on your knees. Now consult your physician before you try ba- dad fuel and if your dad or G lasts longer than four hours <laughs> yeah just keep popping Man, more that, dad my fuel. fucking kids went to bed i really want to play with them more this is damn bro- it all this dad fuel we are skipping school sort of- tomorrow and zooming it dad fuel <laughs> i'm in dad fuel rehab right now i need you kids to keep your distance <laughs> 
I've been ordered not to ha- not to play with my children uh, for fifty days. Please respect. Please respect this. Please. Please I, respect this journey. Da- dad accidentally put some unleaded dad fuel in the system, so dad dad dad's gonna need to sleep in a little bit today. Can you guys get yourselves to school? Thanks. Let's fucking top off our dad fuel tanks and drive on down to the money zone. Hey, Trav, who's this first message for? It's for Ian Mullion. Or Mullen. <laughs> <laughs> or Dunvrum. Uh, he fr- if he is French, it is Mullion. It is, if uh, he is Chinese, it is Mulan. <laughs> it's from his younger brother. It does not appear to be named here. <laughs> Secret Mulan. Secret Mulan, his younger brother. <laughs> Happy birthday, Ian. On February 8th. Whoop. From- <laughs> Whoopsies. Whoopsies. Uh, from your favorite brother, thank you for always being awesome and introducing me to Mabib Bam, or the Mamba, if you prefer. Uh, I was hoping the bros could wish you a happy birthday, befitting of a king. Happy birthday, my lord. <laughs> oh my gosh, um, <laughs> Excuse me? Excuse what did he say? Sorry? So happy birthday, King Ian. Do you wanna do you wanna have sex? I'm your I'm your sister. This is Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Thank you. All right, winter's coming, and so is your next birthday. So, catch it. Trav, we got another message. Is this the one for Lindsay Peters? It is the one for Lindsay Peters. Uh, who and and? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did, did you, you have some more? other context <laughs> for me? I do have more information. Would you like it? Yeah, you know, as much as I was just wanting to, like, read these words back and forth, I thought maybe we could try to make, like, a conversation. Well, this message is from uh, Daniel, Liz, Logan, and Ryan. And it says here both day and night, which either means that they know two Ryans, one named Ryan Day and one named Ryan Knight, which is cool. That's cool. Or there's one Ryan, and he behaves differently during the day and during the night. Wait, or... There's like Lady Hawk. There's a Ryan uh-huh. where every day at dusk he goes home, and then the next Ryan comes in for his shift. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't I like, I like know what that is. Guys, there's literally no explanation. That is not the craziest thing. How are you guys celebrating Ryan Day? <laughs> uh, I'm just looking forward. To, I'm you know me. I'm just looking forward to Ryan Night. Uh, man. Living just for work, the living for the living Ryan for night. the Ryan Night. Well, anyway, we should make this message about the person who the message is for. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Lindsay, congratulations on your new uh, gig. All your misandrist friends here at MLMRMDAM are really proud. She'll be making an honest living so she can fund her hedgehog and greyhound habits. You know, I hate delivering these coded messages. I Does know. she really have hedgehogs? I, I don't. Did I, we? Is that did you joke? just say the or activation like thing? Did you just say the activation phrase that's going to send her after our American president and pope? <laughs> I was trying to decode what M L M R M D A M means, and I think it is my lover, my roommate, my dad, and me, mm-hmm. uh, which makes me all kinds of uncomfortable. So have a happy, uncomfortable new job, Lindsay Peters. Do you think that uh, that's an activation phrase that turns it from a robot into an android that's capable of love? <laughs> that's exactly what just happened. Yeah. Uh, I got one more uh, thing we want to tell you about. Super exciting. Not a person, more of an entity. You want to go to uh, – it's a show called the, – the chapter titles were so good. It's a weekly podcast discussing the magical world of Harry Potter one chapter at a time. They balance keen literary insight with irreverent off-the-wall humor, maintaining a wisdom-to-goof ratio that listeners of MBMBAM might enjoy. And we keep it nice and pithy at around 20 minutes per week. We've just started the fourth book in the series, so now is the time to join. Man, how long you guys been doing this show? There's like a lot of chapters there Mm -hmm. you've already gotten through. I also like that they acknowledge that the first three books are bad, and then it gets really good on the fourth book. Um, more like the opposite of what you said, because the first three are all about child childlike fantasy. And oh, then... shit. And I forgot Prisoner of Azkaban was number three. Now I take it back. Number three is when it starts to get good. What's the one the where, first I stop, two books are where I stop being about childlike fantasy and all about like war and death? It's like, we get enough of that in real life. Just give me my, give me my Hufflepuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm with you on that. And I'm looking forward to listening to these kids 
read chapter titles. <laughs> <laughs> Are you drinking dad fuel right now? <laughs> I just want these other podcasts to stay out the game. Yeah. Listen, it's 2013. <laughs> There's not a lot of money, resources, or ears lying just lying around. You know. Hey, check this out. The boy who lived. There's one. There's no, that's chap one, book one. We just took that from you. Took that. That's ours now. These nuts. <laughs> Harry and Hagrid reach an agreement. <laughs> <laughs> the worst wand. Defense against the fart arts. Dark, and not dark farts? What happened to you? <laughs> what the fuck, Justin? <laughs> You're a dad fuel. I have no kids here that I could dad. <laughs> so just building up in my limbic system. Uh, my body's shutting down piecemeal. You need to vent. You need to open your exhaust. <laughs> and vent I want to open my dad vents. <laughs> He's busted a fan belt. <laughs> um, so be sure to check out the chapter titles are so good dot com or search chapter titles in iTunes. And they will sh- it will show up there and you can listen to it and enjoy it. And if you, speaking of enjoyment, guess who bought another 12 weeks of advertising? With my brother, my brother. Lock it in for three goddamn, through May. Through Through May. Through May. You are going to be hearing us talk about what? ExtremeRestraints.com. Your home for fucking and sucking and living and learning. And trucking. You know what's funny? There would have, there was a time, uh, like two years ago, when Justin saying that sentence would have made me so uncomfortable. Now, not anymore. I can't no barriers anymore. I can't sleep without listening to episodes where we talk about trucking and fucking and sucking <laughs> and ducking and ducktails and shucking. And shucking. You want to get to this adult superstore right now and get some herbal penis pills, Justin. This is more of a reminder <laughs> to myself when I listen to this. Siri, later. I just wrote it on the back of my hand in Sharpie. Siri, Siri? set calendar reminder. Herb max stamina. Um. T- special pills reminder send that to my personal account thank you and pick up another nine pack of dad fuel <laughs> why do they only sell it in nine packs I have no it's idea. so inconvenient i know uh they do have max size male enhancement formula so that's a more of a cream mm-hmm. uh look well, it- for max fun male enhancement formula <laughs> I've always said in order to make sure that you really maximize it and blow it up down there, you got to go both internal with some sort of uh, some sort of pill, and then you need a you need a topical ointment. Um, If you go to this, definitely, it's just going to stretch the inside. It's going to stretch the inside. You're going to get stretch marks. It's going to look like a zebra's neck. Uh, This is a (laughs) this is a site you can go to extremestraints.com. It's going to be super private. Um, Your it will be discreetly shipped to you in a box shaped like a dick. Is there, yeah, I was going to say, is there a, like a second option? Because everyone talks about the discreetness. What if I want all my neighbors to know what's up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, is there like an option where it arrives right? and the guy knocks on my door and says, hey, your special extra large condoms are here. Yeah. Hello? <laughs> are you here? I want them to know. Yeah. They, could, they just bring you a giant crate like in a Christmas story. Only instead of saying fragile, it says like pussies. Just so people know. Let there be no uh, doubt about it. If you head over and use the coupon code MIDDLEST at ExtremeRestraints.com, you're going to save 20%, which is like one-fifth of a dildo. Would you say mm-hmm. that the website itself is discreet, or is this the kind of thing that maybe maybe you do on a, a small-screened computer if if your significant other is around? A uh, little of column A, little of column B. Maybe your significant other's into it. Mm-hmm. Maybe they don't know they're into it yet. Do they have, like, a secret skin that you can apply to the website to make it look like the Oprah Television Channel website? <laughs> um, and then there's, like, a picture of, like, the upcoming, you know, Book of the Month book. But uh, the text of it is, like, secret dicks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just like what you said is there. Uh, and there's a boss button. So if your boss comes by and just click that, it looks like charts and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, but the chart is like how your boner will go when you put this cream on it, and it's just a line going upwards. So it's get like over a, there. It's a time to boner X, Y uh, access. Mm-hmm. So uh, get over there, extremestakes.com. Pie chart. How much time will you spend fucking? And, but it's just one big blue circle. And the circle, just, the circle just says yes. All time. <laughs> uh, I'm new to the whole dating scene. Most of my previous boyfriends were dudes who orbited around my friend circle. 
uh, and conversation flowed easily. However, once the friend ratio of exes in my group started creeping towards the 40% mark, I figured it's probably time I started branching out. Problem is, I don't know how to converse with a person I've just met in a way that's not awkward. Once I start trying to think of something to ask, panic sets in, and I draw a total blank. It's the getting to know you questions that I struggle with the most. I don't know what's appropriate to ask. It might be considered prying. If you guys ha have any ideas past the obvious, what do you do type thing, I'd love to hear it. That's from Gmail. Um, I like this question. I like this question because it presupposes everything we've been chatting about, which is the best thing to do is to ask them questions, get interested in them, and don't be afraid to like start the conversation out about them. That's great. I think it's a very fair point because I think there are certain questions that seem like prying, but I actually get I have problems with this when it's a person that I sort of know yeah. a little mm -hmm. bit and I'm seeing them because like I'm always worried that I'm going to ask like, how's your dad? And, um, you know, he's in jail again or something, yeah. uh -huh. you know, and I'll step into a landmine that I didn't mean to. <laughs> Because you were so busy having an uncomfortable conversation that you weren't looking down at the minefield you were walking through. Right, exactly. Um, I wonder. Do you think now's really the time, Justin? Can we focus? No, I'm just wondering. You know, how's your family? They're all dead. Oh no, kaboom, yeah. kaboom. Um, this is like this. I really do think that, like, the, this, having those kinds of conversations and getting to know somebody, like having those those getting to know you conversations it's a skill that you really do need to practice because it is different from having a conversation with just some rando if you're like uh -huh. on a date or whatever um i think that's why i think that's sort of the the reason that online dating is successful because it's like practice it's like you can practice having these relationships and it's the most low stress scenario ever because if it fucks up it's like well you know there's so many people on the internet you know just look at twitter I'm I'm like sitting here trying to think of a question that doesn't just make you sound like just a complete boner. Well, don't it's like, well, the question was like, what I thought is like, so seen any good movies lately? And it's like, I, it's, I think it's about the sincerity with which you ask it. And if you ask it like I just did, you sound like, an but there's asshole. nothing, there's nothing sincere. <laughs> so, there's nothing sincere books, about like, sir. so tell me about yourself. Like what? Like mm -hmm. what? I really, really like sour jelly bellies. Like, what the fuck do you want from me? Like, what do you want to know? That's not your, that's not yours to know. I think if I, you come at a date from the angle of an interrogation, like, you're just going to mm -hmm. weird them and yourself out. Like, just talk to I them. I think and that's that the shit issue. That's out. why I have such problems with meeting people in bars, because there's no context. If you're, like, at a movie screening or you're, like in a book club or yeah. you're anywhere else like you have things to talk about but if you're at a bar all you can say is what are you drinking yeah and do you come to this bar often mm -hmm. like so do you like really loud house music or oh you don't i uh, mean either have you tried it's a like, have you tried dad fuels pale ale oh it's so good yeah. it's bit, they've used <laughs> lots of hops hops for pops is what they call it <laughs> um you could ask him the 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 Questions that James Lipton uses, just go through those, cycle through those. <laughs> they would love that. Hey, I think. so what's your favorite word? Oh, I'm Travis. Nice to meet you. Sorry. What sound do you love? Mm -hmm. Boxes or briefs? I, I've never watched inside the acting <laughs> studio. <laughs> when you get to dad heaven. Dad fuel or dad fuel? Trick question. I'm in marketing for dad fuel. To which side do you dress? <laughs> um, <laughs> I see that form shoes or bow ties? <laughs> I think that would be great. Just set yourself up a set of flashcards that was all, like, or questions that didn't have anything to do with one another. Flamingos or bathtubs? Oh, very interesting. <laughs> witches or sandwiches? <laughs> and I do mean here witches that mainly practice their, uh, their machinations in sand. Do you know what is really usually very successful is if, if you are at a bar or something and you're meeting somebody um, – uh, just walk up to the person and then point to the person next to them and be like, this guy, right? I'm Griffin, by the way. <laughs> Maybe offer him a Tums, because most of the time you could probably use one. Oh, I've got yucky tummy. stomach acids. I've got yucky tummy. Do you have yucky tummy? Pop one of these. I'm Griffin, by the way. <laughs> this is going great. I think if you... I really feel like we've made a tummy connection. When you introduce yourself to somebody, if you say I'm 
and then your name, and then by the way, that's probably the worst. That's probably the worst five. I love it because it is, it implies that you've just had like a really long in depth conversation right. and failed to mention your name. But if you're like, "Hello, I'm Griffin," by the way, but that's I played that like when I was in this person's shoes, like just out of a relationship in college and like had never really like dated before, and like would just be talking to like some strange person I just met at a bar, like, and then we talk for like ten minutes about. Like, the, some shitty movie that we just saw, and then it's like, oh, I'm Griffin, by the way. I should have afforded you that information ten minutes ago. <laughs> Maybe. Whoops. Movies do this all the time, though. Movies do this with a delayed title card. So you'll be watching Jake Sully run, or, run through the jungle for ten minutes, and then after ten minutes, it's like, oh, I'm Avatar, by the way. Mm-hmm. <gasps> That's the movie maybe I am. maybe we should play it like that and be like I'm Griffin by the way directed by Griffin, I'm Griffin. <laughs> coming soon and then leave the room and that was just a teaser and then you come back and you say it's time for the release date by which I mean sex <laughs> okay next time you're talking to someone of the opposite sex and trying to pick them up stop them after two minutes and thirty seconds and say sorry baby this is just a trailer unless you're ready for the red band trailer and then you get your dick back. <laughs> In, ca- in which case, I will meet you in the alley. <laughs> I'm in a box office smash your pussy apart. <laughs> Did I do good? I, I wanted to play along. So. You guys were playing like a fun game together, and I wanted to get in on it, but I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't. I that was one of those conversations I could only sidestep into, and then say box office smash that pussy apart. I'm Griffin. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. Great. Guys and and so inclined girls, there's a great line you can use oh, next time you're right in a movie. It's the worst. Just get engaged as quick as you can, man. And oh. Nobody nobody knows what they're doing out there. Uh, Griffin, how about a Yahoo question? Yeah, I'll give you one. Man, right. I got like six. I got six really good ones. Um, okay. <laughs> this one may not be able to start much of a conversation. I just love it so much. I was sent in by Ben Hawkenberry. Thanks, Ben. It's by Yahoo. It's his user. She's that one who asks, how do people on Jeopardy know the answers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, fuck. my God. I, I don't know where that question's going to go, but I do just like... I just the, like that I like it the exists. picture of this gentleman watching Jeopardy and, like, pulling his hair out, screaming, what kind of freak... How do they know this? This is amazing. Oh, my God. They have superpowers. Um, oh. Let's try this one. This Yahoo Answer is sent in by Christopher Cook. Thank you, Christopher. It's by Yahoo Answers user Sean Dalt, who asks, Is it weird to carry a list at the grocery store? I was at Giant Eagle and about to go into the store. I had my cart pulled aside and stepped to the side to get my list out of my pocket. It took about 30 seconds for me to reach the list in my pocket. There was this one lady standing behind me and awkwardly staring at me strange, so I said to her, Go ahead. You don't just have to stand there and wait for me. She gave me a disgusted look and said rudely, Whatever. The way she was looking at me was beyond weird and treated me like I was dumb or had severe obsessive compulsive disorder for having a grocery store list of what to buy. Uh, Is it weird and obsessive to carry a huge grocery list with you? Blah, 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 blah. So the deeper level here is this young man was masturbating in the Giant Eagle parking lot. <laughs> I was masturbating through my pocket at Giant Eagle. Is that okay? <laughs> I know they allow that at Piggly Wiggly. In fact, they encourage it. <laughs> the Jiggly Piggly Wiggly. Mm-hmm. But I, listen, at Giant Eagle, is that not cool? No. Are we – I want to say something about Giant Eagle real quick. Okay. Is the world not unfriendly enough? to time travelers yeah. that we have a giant building with the words giant eagle written on the side like what else are you gonna think is stored there yeah you're gonna think there's a giant eagle in there right yeah well there, Isn't i mean not what you would think people of the future do not journey into that building <laughs> have you it contains a boat of prey the likes of which have never been seen <laughs> This is where we've, we've, we've imprisoned him here and put a giant sign to remind ourselves that this is indeed where we left the giant eagle. <laughs> what do you want to call a grocery store? How about eagle? No. Fuck <laughs> that. Fuck that noise. Big... How about this? Giant eagle. What about fucking Big Bear? What about fucking Big Bear? We had a grocery store called Big Bear. <laughs> we did. Oh, oh, Big Bear, huh? Nice try, guys. I got something bigger than a Big Bear, a giant eagle. Oh, God, they just opened enormous raptor across the street. <laughs> do you want to go to Little Cat? Fuck you. Of course Fuck I don't want to go to Little Cat. 
damn you and your mom and pop tiny animal store. <laughs> I'm going to a Norma Seal. <laughs> Give me where's my list? Do you guys use lists? I can't. No. I can't. I can't. Do you know why? Because I don't like my grocery shopping experience to A, take six hours, and B, be like the final round in the Carmen Sandiego uh, game show. Mm -hmm. Like, if I have a list, that just ensures that, like, I'm going to go, oh, okay, pasta? Well, that's in in lane six. But, oh, shit, pasta sauce, that's all the way over in lane one. I just go through in a serpentine pattern and clear the shelves like I'm in supermarket sweep. The problem with that is, the problem with that is, yeah. Is that in this world, if you arrive at a supermarket at the same time as someone else who is also serpentining through the store, and you arrive like three seconds after them, you are guaranteed to look like the creepiest supermarket stalker ever. Because you're just like slowly winding behind them. Like, <laughs> oh, you getting ramen? I'm going to get ramen too. Turning right here? Oh, that's funny. Oh, yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. Oh, you get marshmallow fluff, huh? I haven't had a fluff and nutter in forever. Maybe that's how you do your small talk pickup lines. It's everything they pick up. Oatmeal, huh? It's, it's good for the constitution. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I, lo- I have to have a list. Uh, I like to do a little meal planning, so I have some idea of what I'm going to make. Uh, but but I I always I always go with a list. I don't know how you guys know. It's, it's funny to me because what you need. like just what you said. Like I I think lists are for people that can plan meals, and I can't do that. So I'll just like wind through the store and get whatever I want, and then I'll get home and pull out the things that I want and be like, what the fuck am I gonna make with pickles and yeah. peanut butter and oh Jesus, well, what was I thinking? Well, you say meal planning. Like I don't need a list to when I see spaghetti go, yes, yeah, spaghetti. That is desirable to me, or it will be sometime well, within do. the next week, week and a half. Mm, yes. I don't need I a list. T- do I like spaghetti? Help me list. <laughs> list says I like spaghetti, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up. But do I need grains? I just don't know. If you're gonna make a meal with like more than two components, then it gets a little trickier. What if I wanna make swordfish piccata? Like, I'm not going to walk past the capers and be like, oh, fuck, looking good, capers. Get in here. <laughs> oh, briny and in a jar? Perfect. That's just what I want. Get in here, capers. You and me are going on a caper. Uh, but that's it. But I feel like a shitty, ba- like a mean bouncer when I walk by the fruit by the foots. And I'm like, sorry, fruit by the foots, not on the list. We already got too many fruit by the foots in this bar. I'm suggesting you a plan that keeps you from buying fruit by the foot. Like, I, yeah, I do need that structure, I guess. Uh, but then well, I need a well, list well, of Mr. Moneybags, Mr. Uh, Mr. VIP. Yeah. Who am I to say no to the chocolate covered gingerbread cookies? Yeah, <laughs> I need I need a, a list, a do not buy list that my doctor made for me. <laughs> it's like you need to stop buying so much salted caramels. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I that that is right that is why um, I I do not allow myself to go to the store by myself anymore without Teresa. Yeah, because the gentle shame that she puts upon me when because when we walk in our local Aldi because Aldi is awesome, the first like thirty feet is all bags of chips, and I will just without thinking about it grab like eight bags of chips. Yeah, <laughs> and the gentle shaming that Teresa and that's like every week. The gentle shaming that Teresa will lay down on me and be like, "Oh, cheese puffs, huh? Oh, and Doritos." I feel okay. like I feel. Oh, like, oh, and you're getting the wavy chips. Oh, and the regular chips. All right, yeah. I feel like yeah, uh, yeah. I feel like I've talked about this before, but Rachel and I, when we go grocery shopping, she starts on one end of the store with a cart, and I start on the other end of the store with a cart, and then we meet in the middle. And once we meet in the middle, we go we go check out. Have I talked about this before? This Is this amazing twelve minute long grocery shopping maneuver. Um, the only How do you do that without a list? I uh, and how do you do that without not meeting in the middle and her going, why did you get 18 boxes of cookies? Well, well it's because I'm well, I'm a grown ass man. Um, but also because I man can eat cookies. I mostly just buy the same things every time I shop, which is uh, unfortunate because she starts in produce and I start on the far, far end of the store where they put the bad foods. <laughs> uh, so without fail, Every time I start my journey, the first two things I put in my cart at the H-E-B grocery store is toilet paper and low-fat ice cream sandwiches. So somebody who sees me at the beginning of my odyssey is like, this man has very specific plans for the evening. And that is to party on some skinny cow ice cream sandwiches and then poop and wipe butts. You have to be so careful when you're buying toilet paper. I'm about having it like I'll go to Rite Aid because I need toilet paper and then I'll get like one other thing. And I always feel like the subtle message I'm sending is this makes me poop. <laughs> I, you know, have this- I, 
It will make I poop. went to Walgreens yesterday to buy batteries and uh, was reminded that it was discount Valentine's Day candy time. Mm. Oh, shit. And so, like, I couldn't stop myself. I bought three boxes, like, heart-shaped boxes of chocolates to be shared with me and my fiancé. And then I realized that when I walked up the counter, I was buying a pack of batteries and some, like, outdated Valentine's Day candy. And I just couldn't, I couldn't even think about what message I was sending to this poor man. Mm. Uh, that was ringing me out, except for, wow, this is a sad guy. Poor guy. But then I ate all of that chocolate in one day. So who's the sad guy now? What's great about my maneuver is sometimes we don't meet each other in the middle. And you make it to the other side of the store. It's like, well, double chili this week, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's double chili week. Fuck. Perfect. And the ice cream sandwiches always melt by the time you get to the cashier. So you guys just get cans of chili sometimes? Yeah, yeah. That'd be dope. I wish I could have a can of chili. Do it. It's healthy. You get a can of chili and you get a thing of like a block of Velveeta. You melt them together. You have some delicious well, chip dip. Well, I was, I was thinking like Wolf's turkey chili. It's like, you know, it's like oh. 280 calories, but that's like your whole meal. Sydney's not big on chili, so I don't get to eat chili much. You could have your own secret husband chili that you drink with your dad fuel. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you having for fuel? dinner tonight? Me? Husband chili and dad fuel. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> trying to start a family. <laughs> do you guys want to end the show? Yeah, I do, Griffin. I really do. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. I just do need to try to get the domain for Dad Fuel. Oh, really? So just hang in there real quick. Just trying to grab that. I feel like you should talk to us about like how we're going to split the revenues for Dad. You're just sort of going for it right now. Shit, it's taken. No, but wait! I can get you dadfuel.net. <laughs> can you get me dadfuel.org? I dad can't. Dadfuel.gov. Do you want dadfuel. Okay, I can get you dadfuel.org, or I can get you dad-fuel.com. Which one do you want? Can you get me? How about what about um um Sudsbuds Dadfuel? Or just why don't we start with Sudsbuds? We can go okay. sudsbuds.com slash dadfuel, and that'll be like our landing page for our dadfuel product. And then that that allows us the opportunity to really... Sudsbuds is taken. Well, now sudsbuds.net, I can get you. Okay. Now sudsy.com. Uh, oh, man, if I can get sudsy, shit. Well, the, sudsy is our is our mascot. <laughs> I'm sudsy the dadfuel. <laughs> <Let's, laughs> I'm drunk and I love you. How I have another one. Okay. Extreme restraints. Okay, that's taken. Dot gov. Dot gov. Okay. <laughs> it's a site about waterboarding. <laughs> Dig it. What, what about dadfuel.xxx? Uh, that is $90. Lo siento. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to this program. Uh, we, uh, we, we really appreciate you, of course, tuning in every week. Um, hopefully you will join us again next Monday and every subsequent Monday as we delight you. Except um, for the Mondays that we skip Baru, which we did last week. And sorry, we don't do it that often. It was a bit, it was the wicked busiest weekend. Justin was snowed in. He almost died. I almost died in Nemo. Now who's the bad guy? Now who feels um, bad? We've, uh, we've got a website, mbmbam.com. We got a Twitter account at mbmbam. Uh, people tweet about us with the MBMBAM hashtag. People like Kayla, Austin Terrell, uh, Travis, Ernesto, Shanta, Sasha, um, Brett Eagleson, uh, Sir, Kevin Grant, um, Katie Cisneros, uh, here, Jay Stanek. Here's a weird thing I noticed uh, this week. If you search, have you guys noticed so soon you can taste it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, you have noticed this. That's like a spam. It's like a spam bot, right? There's a spam bot that tweets so soon you can taste it. Period. Period. M B M B A M. And <gasps> if you search for that specific phrase, there's like 30 spam bots that have used that specific phrase. Which <laughs> I, I find that very endearing because I think it's just like a thing that they say so that they're so that they're like a, their shitty accounts don't get caught for being spam bots. So like our show is like a heuristic. For seeming like a, you're a human being. You, oh, so this is like the new Turing test. Right, right. Anybody who talks about, like, no robot knows what our fucking podcast is. We're not right. that. We're not that. But I, in a way, I feel famous a little bit. Because, like, 
before like they'd be like man i sure do like justin bieber and that would be like the metric for for humanity Ooh. also i think we missed this because we were gone last week mysteriously um but they announced the max fun con lineup it's oh yeah it's sick Ooh, it is you it's know exciting. It if you us. haven't seen it check it out we're up in it yeah we'll we're do- there we're doing a we're doing a, a mabim bam justin and i are doing a a video game panel with tom bissell um should so, be pretty crazy so if you like that I, w- I will be doing nothing. Travis won't do shit. I'll be drinking Malort. Mm-hmm. It's just me and John Hodgman drunk in the pool. Oh, and uh, speaking of John Hodgman, before I forget, check out all the other awesome podcasts on the Max Fun Network. Uh, Judge John Hodgman, Jordan Jesse Go, Bullseye. Um, at, oh, and Bullseye, which is now going to be on NPR. So congratulations. So yeah, that's awesome. Bullseye. Yeah, I forgot we couldn't talk about that, but yeah. It's NPR. NPR Bullseye. Catch it uh, there. And check out uh, Stop Podcasting Yourself, and Throwing Shade, Risk, Memory Palace. Oh, I feel like I forgot one. International Waters. Jordan, you know, Je- Jordan the, Jesse the Go. The gentleman who makes Memory Palace, uh, uh, Nate Dimio, uh, wrote the episode of Parks and Recreation last week. Not this week. Oh, but last week. it's a great episode. He's also going to be at Max FunCon. So come. I will mm-hmm. see him and hug him. Yep. Um, I want to thank John Roderick and the Long Winters for the Super Theme Song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed. Thank you, John Roderick and the Long Winters, for this for, for the song that I just mentioned. Uh, Griffin, you had a last question for us? Yeah, I do. It was sent in by Christine Erickson. Thank you, Christine. It's by Yahoo Answers user Dark One who asks, Is it good to be a pilot? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin, by the way. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad. Square on the lips. Thank you.